Birds are the masters of deception. They try and hide signs of illness. If you have a bird that looks sick, it is sick. In this short presentation, I want to outline some of the common things that occur to pet birds and what you should do for first aid. Taking your bird to an experienced avian veterinarian is the first choice of treatment, but that's not always possible. So here are a few at-home tips that may help. What does a sick bird look like? It has fluffed feathers, drops its wings, closes its eyes, head goes down and has difficulty perching, or you may find it sitting in the feed dish. These are all signs your bird is in trouble. What do you do? The bird that looks sick do not give many signs of what the underlying cause is. They just look sick. You need to buy that bird some time. Birds kept in outdoor aviaries need to be caught and placed in a makeshift hospital cage. Anything will do in the short term, provided we can get the bird warm, dim the light and find a quiet place. A carry cage, a smaller wire cage, even a cardboard box will do. Put the cage in a quiet room away from noise, other pets and children. Cover the cage or box with a towel and try to get a temperature of about 26, 28 degrees. A warmed room, a pet heat pad or even a 60 watt light globe can be used to elevate the temperature. For your indoor birds, move their cage to a quiet area, cover it with a towel or blanket and apply some form of heat. Again, a 60 watt light globe if you've got nothing else. Leave the bird in peace, in peace, for about an hour while you try and contact a bird vet for further advice. Should your bird not look better? Should it not respond to the warmth and dark in about an hour? Now you know it's in trouble and it needs help quickly. To make a hospital cage in an emergency is really pretty easy. All you're going to need, a solid cardboard box. That'll, that'll do as a cage. You will need a heavy bowl for water. Don't use a light bowl for water because all that'll happen is the bird will sit on the edge of it and tip it over. So get yourself a heavy bowl, that becomes your water bowl. Your light bowl, that's fine, it can, you can use it for seed, that goes in. When you put a perch in, anything will do. Here you go, here's a branch off a gum tree. It's all we're going to use. But when you put it in, put it right to the bottom of the box. It's on the bottom of the box because that's where the sick bird will be. It'll sit on that perch on the bottom. All we need in the box. Then we're going to need a heat source. And look, a lead light is fine. I've got a 60 watt globe in here. We plug it in. We don't put it in the box. We put it alongside the box. The idea here, it creates a warm zone inside, but the other side of the box is cool. And there you go, the world's simplest hospital cage. What I want to do now is just go through some of the more common things that can occur to your pet bird. Number one on my list is the bleeding feather. A growing feather is called a blood quill. That means it's full of blood. Damage to a blood quill may cause profuse bleeding. Blood quills that are most commonly damaged are those on the wings. A broken blood quill is an emergency. You need to stop the bleeding immediately. What do you do? Catch the bird up and wrap it in a towel. Take the affected wing, it's normally a wing, and extend it so you can see the base of the feathers. It should be quite obvious where the blood is coming from. Use your fingers, firmly pinch the damaged quill to stop the blood flow. Now, you need to maintain that pressure for at least 10 minutes by the clock. Bird's blood clots rather slowly. So the longer you can maintain the pressure on the rupture site, the better it is. Once the site has stopped bleeding, the bird should be placed back in that warm, dimly lit hospital box and monitored. When you are sure the bleeding has stopped, the bird can be returned to its normal cage. If the bleeding continues, then you need an avian vet and you need him now. One of the other common things that happens to pet birds is being bitten. They're being bitten by another bird, a cage mate, cats, hawks or owls, particularly if they're outside. These bite wounds are rather common, you see a lot. 
Some will be minor bites, others quite life-threatening. If your bird is bitten, quickly catch the bird up and check the extent of the damage. If there is bleeding, apply pressure to the area for 10 minutes or until that bleeding stops. Once the bleeding has stopped, the bird can be put in our warm, dim hospital box while you contact the veterinarian. Skin wounds often look terrible, but actually they heal well. Your vet will advise you what will be required. Cat bite wounds will require antibiotics, as they often cause infections. Do not delay in getting treatment. Beak wounds and limb wounds from a cage mate, that is some, another bird in the same cage, may require surgery. They should be examined by a veterinarian to determine the extent of the injury. Some are minor, some are nasty. The best you can do is stop the bleeding, make the bird comfortable, and get on the phone and arrange that visit to your vet. Okay, let's have a quick talk about window trauma. Indoor birds, especially cockatiels, are really prone to flying into windows. Generally, the birds are only stunned and most recover quite quickly. But if you find your bird on the floor after a window accident, once again, get it in that warm, quiet, dark place and leave it for about an hour. If after an hour the bird is still unable to stand, walk or fly normally, then it needs attention from your veterinarian. Mostly they recover uneventfully, but don't take too many chances. The other thing that goes on with birds is they break bones. The fragile nature of bird bones means that fractures are common. Legs and wings can get caught in any number of household things and those fractures need to be fixed by your veterinarian. Leg fractures should be left alone and the bird just taken for examination. Depending on the type of bird, the bone involved and the nature of the fracture, the treatment from the veterinarian will vary. Wing fractures, it's important to try and splint the wing. Splint the wing until you can get to your veterinarian. Binding the wing to the body is the simplest and most effective way to immobilise it. Okay, as part of the demonstration of how to bind a wing, Cass has brought in her little bird, Buddy, Buddy the Cockatiel. Buddy's going to pretend he's got a broken wing and we're going to show you how to wrap it up. Okay, Cass, if you can just hold the bird's body, what I'm going to do is just put wing feathers and tail feathers together at the back like so, a little bit of tape, this is first aid, remember, okay? So we're just trying to get our bird secure until we get him to the veterinarian. This is not a permanent treatment. Okay, now Cass, if you can just slip your hand back and just show me the middle of his body, that's it. Get our tape. Here we go. Now go straight round the centre. Bit hard to see with all these hands. Feet to the back. Couple of laps, don't. It doesn't have to look neat. It just has to get that wing strapped up so that it can't move. Why are we doing this? Because the bird will want to flap its wing. And if it's got a broken bone, the two ends of the bones rub against one another and make a terrible mess. Much harder for the veterinarian to fix later on. So here's Buddy. Buddy looks a bit peeved with the world, but there he is round his body, round his tail. He wished he could get it off, but hang on, we're taking him to the veterinarian. Okay, round the base of the tail, round the body, in the car, away you go.